what we sing and from what we hear when Margaret's bringing us the word. But above all, just expect big things from that mighty God as we worship, praise, and listen.
so um, we believe that that's where God has called us um, to serve. And uh, we still have the capacity like, uh, to help other churches as well. And I personally have come to the revelation that that's my calling. I've had three different groups ask me to run Bible studies. One of the groups didn't even know what we studied. And the guy called me up and he said, we would like you to teach one of Acts. When he said that, I was already convinced that I was going to say no to him. As soon as he said the book that he wanted me to teach on, I immediately knew this is the third testimony that this is what I'm to do. And so it's really exciting. A lot of the people that we have are young people. So I'm in my late 40s. Uh, my two teaching um, brothers, so there's three of us that we teach, are in their early 50s and later 50s. And all of our children uh, have actually, a lot of them are coming to faith. And so we have this huge gap now where these kids want to know about Jesus. And so we're going to step in and we've already started. We've had two Bible studies. It's been hugely successful. And we have one more today as well. And so listen, that's in a, in a nutshell, that's what it is. It's an extension. I know it's always difficult when we move on. Uh, but when you look at the church in the times of Christ in Jerusalem, it wasn't until they moved out of their comfort zones and moved into the bigger world that the church really exploded. And I really see that this is going to be the beginning of an explosion. I woke up last night, and it wasn't last night, the night before, and all night in my dream, all of what I was singing was revival fire for revival fire for. I had no um, thoughts about that song during the day or the week month, but I believe that God has got some revival fire that's about to fall on this um, awesome city of Melbourne and great nation of Australia. Are you ready? <laughs> Thank you. Sir, so, we're going to just pray for him. And do you want to come out and just go to the like to come and just pray for So I, I believe that, yes, there is going to come a revival in the city of Melbourne. We've been hearing about it for many years now. We don't know how long it will be, but I, I just think, well, obviously it's getting closer and closer. There's been prophecies for many, many years about revival in the city. So, yes, I hope it's around the corner. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're just going to pray for him. It's sad for us that he's moving on, but uh, we're excited because God has plans. And where he takes someone, he'll bring someone else. So, you know, we're excited about what God is doing. So let's just pray for him as he, in his new venture. Father, we just uh, thank you and praise you that you know all things, you have plans and purposes for each one of us, for each church. And Lord, we do bring Sash to you and we ask, Lord, that you would uh, just bless him and lead him and guide him as he goes into this new venture with uh, studying the Bible with his uh, colleagues of old. Lord, I just pray for a blessing upon him. I pray for multiplication. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them wisdom pray, Father, that you would help them to be able to nurture and to pastor and to grow this group, Lord, that many would come to faith because of it. So we just uh, thank you, Lord, for his family that are behind him, and we just, just submit him to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you Sash. Thank you. We're just going to pray for, the Bible tells us to pray for our um, country, pray for our leaders, and maybe David, if you want to go out with the kids, not sure whether they're what they're doing out there, but <laughs> we're just praying for our for ourselves, especially over this next three weeks. We really want to seek God. And I'm going to be talking today about prayer and about the power of prayer. Prayer is the answer. That's where we start, is prayer. And so let's just uh, pray for us, pray for our country. Father, we do thank you and we praise you for this beautiful country of Australia. And Lord, we believe those prophecies, so many prophecies have said that there's going to be revival, and especially in this city of Melbourne. And Lord, we... We take that and we run with it and we say, thank you, Jesus, that you are going to come.
and that you're going to fall on this city. And we do pray, yes, let the revival fires fall on this place, that people would come and say, what do I need to do to be saved? Lord, we just uh, thank you for the leaders of our country, for the federal, state and local leaders. And I pray, Father, for your blessing to be upon them. I pray, Lord God, for those who are Christians, that they would be able to take a stand, that they would stand up for that which is righteous, that which is good. And Lord, we, we just pray for peace in this country. We pray for justice. We pray for godly laws to be passed. And for those that, Lord, are not godly, we pray that they would be revoked in Jesus' name. Lord, that you would bring a fear of yourself upon this whole nation. That we might have people leading us who are walking in your ways. I thank you, Lord, for our community. I thank you for our church. And I just pray, oh God, that you would help us, especially over these next three weeks, to hear clearly from you. That we would see your face together as a community of believers. Lord, that you would help us to reach out into this community. We thank you for those mainly music families who have come into our program. Lord, they don't know you. They're just people that have come in from the community because of the music and the program. But I pray, Lord, that you would help us to reach out and to share the love of Jesus with them. I pray for each person in our congregation. Lord, for a blessing upon them. For anyone, Lord, who's maybe sick this morning or who's got something, a need in their life. I pray, Father, that you would reach down and touch them. That you would minister to them. That you would bring breakthroughs in their life. You would bring change in their circumstances. And that you would bring healing in their bodies. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Oh uh -huh.
grace for salvation that we were saved, but amazing grace of God each day as we walk with Him. We all need amazing grace every day, yes? Amen? Because we do things that we shouldn't do. We say things that we shouldn't say. We think things that we shouldn't think. We're constantly needing the grace of God. And this morning, I want to, you, if you have your Bibles with you, to turn to Luke 11. Luke chapter 11. I encourage you to bring your Bible along with you. Luke chapter 11. We're going to be talking about prayer this morning. Luke chapter 11. And we're going to be talking about the power of prayer. You are a person of power. When we are a person of prayer, we are a person of power. When you think of a powerful person, who do you think of? David said to me, I asked him that question, and he said, the Queen. <laughs> well, she is a person of influence and power, isn't she? But anybody, I guess, who's, you know, a leader of something, a corporation, or a leader of a country, or anyone in a position where they've got power over other people, you think of them as a person of power. But do you know that you and I can also be people of power? And you might think, well, how is that? How can we be people of power? Because as we pray, we can go places where those people can never go. We can go into prisons in prayer. There's no door, there's nothing that can keep us out of any place when we pray. We can't go there physically, but we can go there spiritually. There's no border that can keep us out. So we can be people of power, people of prayer. Why is that too? That is because it's God that is the one who changes situations. So as we pray, we reach out to our God who is almighty, who is awesome. We've been singing about him this morning. And he can change your situation and he can change mine. He can do amazing things. And we, as ordinary, everyday people, can do supernatural things when we are people of prayer. Just as an aside, I just thought of an instance when we were on a mission trip to the Ukraine and a little boy, David's probably shared this with you before, but a little boy who was, had been blind from birth, he was healed. I don't know whether he had a tumour or what he had, but he could not see. And he was, as we put laid hands on him, he got his sight back. And the person who was interpreting for us, he got his phone out and he's asking him, and he's following, and you can see his eyes following around the light. And his mum gave a testimony that night at the meeting that we had. Quite amazing. Our God can do amazing things through us when we allow him. God wants us to be active, not passive. He wants us to, and we've talked about this already over the last few weeks, he wants us to put our armour on, take up the sword of the Spirit, because we can wield it and we can use that to change situations. Let's pray and then we're going to look at this, read this passage of scripture. Father, I just thank you that you have given us your word as a sword, that we can use it to defeat the enemy. It's a spiritual warfare. It's not a warfare that the enemy wages, but it's a spiritual warfare. But nevertheless, it's a warfare. It's a battle that goes on. And so, Father, I thank you that we have this weapon and we can use the, the word in prayer to defeat the enemy, to change situations, to be victors, to conquer the enemy. Lord, to be able to have been people of influence. So I pray today, as we look at this story that Jesus told, I pray that you would open our hearts and help us, Lord, to decide that we will be definitely people of prayer, that we might see change in our situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, just before we read that scripture, I just want to uh, read another scripture from Matthew 16, which says, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Imagine that. Whatever we bind on earth will 
will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We could spend the whole morning talking about just that one scripture. But it says that we have, God has given us power and authority. He's given us access to the unlimited power of Jesus Christ, far greater than that of any superpower on earth. So Jesus' disciples came to him and they said, they saw him praying and one of the disciples said, Lord, can you teach us how to pray? Because they were thinking, like oh, I would imagine, they were thinking, if we can pray like you, maybe we can do the miracles that you can do. So he teaches them the Lord's Prayer to start off with. Then he tells them this story, which we're going to read this morning, because he's emphasising the need for us to persevere, to be bold, and to come before our God with confidence. He doesn't want us to grovel on the ground before him. He has taken away our sins. When we come and confess our sins, we can come before a holy God that Steve so well described this morning. We can come before a holy God, holy, forgiven of our sins. We can come before him with confidence. So Luke 11, 5 to 7. Then he, that is Jesus, said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Imagine midnight. Because a friend of mine on a journey has come and I have nothing to set before him. Then one of the inside, the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are already with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. But this is the first part of the story. Here we have, this is a Middle Eastern home uh, and they often have just one room. They were all probably lying on a mat together. The mum and the dad and the kids were all there. The door is locked and uh, it's midnight. And a friend comes banging on the door. But this, this man probably really decided, will I go and knock on his door? He would know that knocking on someone's door at midnight is not going to meet with a friendly response, <laughs> is it? He's going to be very upset with him. But in the Middle East, the, the culture of hospitality is so, so strong that he decides to do this and suffer his wrath of his friend rather than have nothing to give his guests that have come. Now, they didn't have mobile phones, or they didn't have landlines, they didn't have ways of communicating like we do. So he couldn't, they couldn't, the friend couldn't uh, tell him in advance, well, I'm coming by your house and I'm going to get there late, could he? He couldn't do that. So he comes unexpected and the kitchen, the larder, is empty. It's bare, there's nothing there. And so he decides he's going to go to his friend. And his friend probably doesn't get up because he, he doesn't not get up because he doesn't have any bread. I don't think that's the reason. Anyway, we'll continue reading the story. Uh, in Luke 11, uh, 8, but chapter 11, verse 8, the next verse. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him bread because he is his friend, Yet, because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Now, when we're interpreting parables, we don't take every little thing apart and try and... Uh, that's incorrect interpretation of that parable. It's really about the gist of the whole thing. Don't, don't, uh, Jesus was teaching this to tell us that we need to not give up. Just like that friend, he went there, he was very bold, <laughs> He went to his friend and knocked on his door at midnight to get bread. He persevered and to get it to get the bread. He's, Jesus is teaching a picture about prayer because at the beginning, he, we remember the disciples said, "Can you teach us to pray?" He gives them the Lord's prayer and then he tells this story. Okay, it's okay to pray the Lord's prayer, but be persistent, be bold. Come before your God with confidence. Come with confidence. And that's the picture he's painting. 
And it, and it says here that he's not going to get up because of his friendship, but because of his boldness and perseverance, he will get up. And so here we see uh, Jesus explaining to us the need for being bold and persevering. Some people think that God is good and he is good and that he's sovereign and he is sovereign. But because of those things, I, we don't need to bother God. We will just case or ask or what will be, will be. But this story is the opposite. God is good and God is sovereign. But God uses you and I to change circumstances. Did you know that? Two people know. God uses you and I to change not only our circumstances, but to pray for others. That's why we pray. That's why we have three weeks of prayer. But that's why we pray. That's why we come to our Father regularly because we, little old us, can change our circumstances because the power of the Holy Spirit is within you and I, if you're a believer. Isn't that amazing? I think that's amazing. I think that's amazing that you and I can have that much power. We can have power. We need to be in close connection with God. We don't want to be, well, God won't give you things that you don't, that are not good for you. He'll say no. He always answers prayer. He can say, no, that's not good for you. Or maybe you need to wait. You're not ready for this yet. Or he can say, yes, but it needs we need to persevere. We need to lean in there. We need to continue to seek him until we get an answer. No, wait, or yes. That's the answer. Hebrews 10 also tells us this. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross at Calvary, the veil that separated the Holy of Holies with the Holy Place, it was rent in two. It was torn from the top, of, top to the bottom in half. And that was to represent the fact that now we can come into the presence of God. Before that, it was only the high priest that could go into the Holy of Holies. But now we can come into the Holy of Holies. We can come before God's throne when we prepare our hearts. And that, uh, that symbolised Christ's body, which is broken for us, to open up a way, to open a door, so that we can go into the presence of God. Jesus is painting a picture here of, in this story, of us bringing our requests to him, like someone knock, knock, knocking on a door. In fact, I think it was Friday, we had a knock on the door and first of all we didn't hear the knocking or I sort of heard it but I didn't realise it was our door <laughs> because we do have a doorbell but it was a knocking and I went to the door and there is my neighbour bearing gifts of beautiful Indian curry, how's that? And so um, we often exchange things, we often give them things and they give us things but you know if I hadn't answered that door I would not have got that curry. If he hadn't have knocked on the door, I wouldn't have even known he was there. Jesus comes and he says, we are to knock. We are to seek. We are to ask. And so this is our next scripture up there, which says, so I say to you, this is in verses 9 and 10, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Now, He's just told this story about being bold, remember? He's just told this story about that we can come with confidence to God. And now he says, after that, he says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone, everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. So he's saying everyone, everyone who asks, receives. What are you asking for this morning? What are you believing God for in these next few months? Do you have something that
that you're believing in for. Maybe you're praying for someone. Maybe it's something in your life. Maybe it's a situation that you're praying for and believing for change. Jesus said, everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. When we knock on the door, God opens the door. You see, these, these, ver these verbs here, which is ask, seek, and knock, they are emphatic words. They don't mean, well, maybe, or, you know, if you feel like it. Asking is a very strong word in the original language. It's almost like a command. And seeking is an but there's no handle. And someone said to the painter, they said, there's no handle on the door. And the painter said, no, because the handle is on the inside of the door. We have to open the door and allow him to come in. He never marches his way in. He never forces his way into your life. That's why when we worship and we, we lift up our hands, we're saying, Lord, come, have my life, use me, whatever it is that you're praying. We have to come and we have to open the door to him. Revelation 3.20 says, and he's speaking to believers here. These are not unbelievers, these are believers. He says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. He wants you and I to make room in our lives for him. So when, when we open the door, when we are saved, when we become a believer, he comes in. But maybe he's not into every part of your life. What about your finances? Is he there in that room? Your relationships? There's lots of rooms that we have uh, in our lives. But he's saying, I want to come and be Lord in every room of your life. And we have to open that door. This, this scripture, Revelation 3.20, was written to the church of Laodicea. Now the Laodiceans, they were a very complacent church. They were wealthy, they were rich, and they were complacent. They were very busy enjoying their worldly pleasures. And they didn't even know that God was knocking on their door. Sometimes we can be so busy with the things of this world that we don't realise God is knocking on our door. And one of the ways that we can make sure that we hear God's voice is to stop and to spend time listening and praying, you know, talking to God, spending that time listening to Him. Paul writes, put on every piece of armour so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then, this is Ephesians 6, then after the battle, you will be standing firm, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. The most effective weapon that you and I have is prayer and the sword of the Spirit. Things like money, security, material possessions, they can be dangerous. They can be good, but they can be dangerous because they can satisfy us temporarily, but they can make us become indifferent to the things of God which have lasting satisfaction. Lasting satisfaction. I don't know about you, but I want to put my trust in something that's going to last for an eternity. I don't want to put my trust, I can enjoy the things of this world, but I don't want my trust to be in them. I want my trust to be in eternal things. One of the things that we do is we pray, is we need to take our old sin nature to the cross and crucify it daily. <laughs> It's a pla in the place of prayer we can do that, in God's presence. He helps us to see the things in our lives that we need to repent of. He reveals them. He removes it. He forgives us. And then he restores us. He restores us. So if we want to have power in our lives, we need to have a prayer life. We need to spend time 
praying. Otherwise, we will not have victory in our lives. How do we do? How do we have a prayer life? By reordering our priorities. There's a verse in Thessalonians that says, "Pray always, unceasing." So we can be always having that sort of relationship with God throughout the day. But I think there needs to be a time when you sit down from your busy work schedule or whatever it is you're doing and just meditate on the things of God. Listen to what God is saying to you. Make it a habit. Just like we have all sorts of habits in our lives. Prayer can become a habit, a thing that you do in your day. And we, we get to choose. When we ask God, he will answer our prayers. We get to choose whether we're going to ask, seek, and knock so that God can open that door for us, so that he can change our circumstances, so that he can give us victory, so that he can help us as we walk through dark times and difficult times, as we all will go through those difficult times. But knowing that God is there and that he is our strength is something that I want. And as we uh, spend time in prayer, it gives us that strength, it gives us that confidence, whereas if, if we don't spend time in prayer, we can drift, we can drift away. We need to lean into God, we need to spend time with Him. Our greatest hindrances to prayer are busyness, and I'm sure all of us, I know that, that for me, busyness, distractions, and a lack of discipline. It takes discipline, just like it takes discipline with lots of things in our lives, but it does take discipline. You have to put it in your diary. This is time that I'm going to spend with God. In response, if you and I want to make a mark on this world, if we want to see ourselves walking in victory, we need to spend time with our God. And over this next three weeks, I would really encourage you if you're not used to spending a regular time with in prayer, I would encourage you to maybe set your alarm or do something that will, so that you can say, this is the time that I'm going to give to God today, each day. Start with maybe 10 minutes if you have not had any time before. Read the Word. Start with reading a few passage, uh, scripture verses and then take time to just sit quietly, listen to what and ask God to speak to you and then you can share with him the things that are on your heart he wants to hear from you he doesn't want us to be false he wants you to express to him the things that uh, that are troubling you the things that uh, you want to see changed in your life he wants them to bring to him those that already but he wants us to bring them just like jesus used to say to those who came to him he said what do you want me to do for you? Now, he's the king of glory asking. He already knows what they want. But he wants us to acknowledge our need. We need God. <laughs> we need him in our lives. And as we come and as we express our needs to him, he can make yours and my life different. We pray for one another. There's such power when we rise up together as a group of believers and pray together. So my question is, will you take time to pray? Will you prioritise your life so that you can spend some time with God? He's waiting for you and I. He waits for us to come and connect with him. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you that you long for us to come and walk with you, sit with you, Rejoice over you. Worship you. There are so many things that we can do in your presence. And Lord, as we do that, you just pour out your blessings upon us. Blessing us, guiding us, speaking into us, telling us how much you love us. Helping us, Lord, with those things in our lives that we struggle with. I thank you, Lord. You are just such an amazing God. And I pray that each one of us, over this next three weeks, will have a real encounter with you in a special way. That you would speak into our hearts and lives. That we would have things that we can share with one another. And 
Jesus' name. Amen.